Hello and welcome. My name is Biagio Mazza, pastoral associate of St. Sabina Parish in Belton, Missouri, and I'm here to welcome you to another Do You Know series question. Today's Do You Know question is, do you know some of the feasts that are celebrated during the Advent season? There are many key feasts that are celebrated during the Advent season, and I would like to highlight at least five of them. And I'm going to name them first and then talk a little bit about them. The first one would be on December the 6th, the Feast of St. Nicholas. On December the 8th, the Feast of the Immaculate Conception. On December the, 8th, the 9th, the Feast of St. Juan Diego. On December the 12th, the Feast of Our Lady of Guadalupe. On, and on December the 13th, the Feast of St. Lucy. So let's start with December the 6th and the Feast of St. Nicholas. Uh, St. Nicholas died roughly in the year 360 in uh, Mira, he was the Bishop of Mira in uh, what would be today modern day Turkey, ancient Asia, Asia Minor. Uh, and uh, not much is known about him other than the fact that he was very devoted to the underprivileged and the oppressed and the unfortunate. And so a uh, number of legends developed around that theme of his life. Uh, one of the best known legends that was that came out of his tradition, one that is symbol for many of his paintings, is the fact that he, um, he overheard that one of the uh, fathers had three daughters, one of the fathers of the town had three daughters who he couldn't afford to a uh, dowry for them to be married. And so he, uh, he cooked up a plan of selling the oldest daughter in order to make money uh, to uh, marry off his other two daughters. And so what St. Nicholas did is he gathered a bag of gold and threw it over the, the wall into the man's house uh, so that he could afford to at least pay the dowry for one of his daughters. Well, of course, he had two other daughters, and so on each preceding night, uh, what St. Nicholas did is he threw a, another bag of gold. So three times he did this so that the man could actually uh, properly uh, get a dowry for the daughters and so on. So he became known as the one who paid attention to the poor and so his whole notion of a gift giver came into the tradition. In Northern Europe, for example, he became known primarily as Saint Nick and by the time he comes to America, uh, he becomes known as Saint Nicholas or it, what develops uh, as the feast is separated from the day is Santa Claus. Uh, and uh, in the um, 1900s, uh, we have the development of the traditional site, that we, uh, the traditional image that we have of Santa Claus as a jolly old red man, um, uh, a jolly man dressed in red. Um, and so uh, this is St. Nicholas, uh, who to this very day, by the way, in Northern Europe, uh, many children put stockings out or wooden shoes in Holland on the eve of St. Nicholas uh, so that in the morning they will have fruits, nuts, and some candy in them. So it's a tradition that still continues to this very day. On December the, um, December the 8th, we celebrate the Feast of the Immaculate Conception. It's actually a holy day in the United States. Um, Mary was born on September the 8th and therefore uh, mathematically nine months before December, uh, December the 8th she would have been conceived. And the feast proclaims the fact that uh, in 1854 um, Pius IX declared that she, Mary was free from all, any stain of original sin in light of her role as the God-bearer, the, uh, the one who would bear the, uh, the infant Jesus. And so as a result of that, um, she was honored with the Feast of the Immaculate Conception. And in 1846, the U.S. bishops made her the protectorate or the patron saint of the United States. There's even a Basilica of the Immaculate Conception dedicated to her in Washington, D.C. On December the 9th, we celebrate the Feast of St. Juan Diego, the uh, the uh, poor person to whom Our Lady of Guadalupe appeared on December the 9th in the year 1541. Uh, now Juan Diego uh, heard Our Lady appear to him in uh, a Te Tepac Hill, Tepeyac Hill, just outside of Mexico City, and Our Lady asked that she go, that the Juan Diego go to the bishop and demand that a church be built on this particular site. 
the bishop wanted some sort of sign or proof of that. So on December the 12th, Our Lady again, appears once again to Juan Diego and produces uh, roses in mid-December uh, uh, to take to the bishop. And uh, Juan Diego gathers them in his cloak and he takes them to the bishop and as he unfolds them, in front of the bishop, not only does the bishop surprise to see the roses, but all everyone is surprised by the image of Our Lady of Guadalupe on Juan Diego's cloak. And to this very day, that image is revered in Mexico City with a huge, um, huge church built in her honor. Uh, Pope John Paul II canonized um, Juan Diego on July the 30th, 2002, in his visit to Mexico, honoring the Mexican people and so on. On, on December the 12th, we celebrate the feast of Our Lady of Guadalupe, and Our Lady of Guadalupe in 1945, by Pius XII declared her the Queen of Mexico and the Empress of all the Americas. So she is the patron of all the Americas, and through her through her devotion to her and devotion to uh, the uh, the gifts and the many graces that she has given to the Americas, uh, she has been a real blessing for all of the Americas, not just Mexico uh, and so on. And finally, on December the 13th, we celebrate the Feast of St. Lucy. Now, Lucy, uh, the name in Latin derives from the word lux or lucia, which means light, and therefore, Again, we don't know much about St. Lucy, but we do know that many legends developed around her. Uh, she was martyred, supposedly, in the year 304 uh, under the, um, the, uh, the persecution of the Emperor Diocletian. And as a result of that martyrdom, she became a, 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 a saint to, um, that really highlighted uh, her, her qualities as light. As a matter of fact, many uh, she became the patron saint of blindness, and people would pray to her, you know, in terms of illnesses with regards to eyesight and so on. Um, however, during this time of the year uh, in the ancient world, when before the revision of the calendar, December the thirteenth was seen as the shortest day of the year. And so in celebration of that, light was used to celebrate the oncoming solstice that would be coming and the overcoming the darkness of, of winter. So to this very day in Northern Europe, and uh, a number of the young girls go around crowned with lights uh, in order to celebrate the oncoming solstice and to honor St. Lucy. So I hope this has helped to explain just a bit of some of the feasts that are uh, rich feasts that are present during the feast during the season of Advent, and I hope you will return more again to more do you know questions to understand more of our Advent season and the entire Christmas tradition. Thank you very much.